Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 182, Calend Depreciation, recorded on Friday, January 21st, 2021 from Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt and let's get right on into the show. All righty. So uh, kind of an easy show today. Not a whole lot going on this week in the world of Zoho, but uh, still some good stuff to talk about. So our upcoming webinars and events, we have got uh, our Zoho CRM full product tutorial 2022. Um, this week was just a week of webinars for us, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. Um, but this is always a very, very popular one. Um, our most popular one is the one we did this week, which is a the Zoho One product overview where we run through the whole thing. Um, and then this usually comes in as number two, this in uh, books and desks. So anyway, if you can, we'll be dropping that on uh, Tuesday the 15th at 10 a.m. Pacific time and hope to uh, hope to see you there. And as always, head over to Zanata.com slash events where we keep track of all the events in the world of Zoho. And we're kind of changing that up a little bit. So we're doing a lot of work on that to hopefully make it better for you and look for some changes there in the next few weeks. All righty. And with that, Tyler, let's get right on into the news. We will start off with something that is pretty cool. Um, if you are an Apple TV user, uh, Zoho has now released an app for Apple TV. And I am. I've got like five of them around the house, and I've got one in my office right over here. And I'm looking pretty much at that screen that, uh, that you're seeing right there. It's nice. It basically gives you uh, three different screens. They are showing, all the ones they're showing here are for chats. Um, but it also has some really, really cool screens. I could turn a camera around, but it's got one. It's a map of the world, and it tells you where, how many visitors are on your site actively, how many of them are new, how many of them returning, what part of the world they're from. Um, and then they've got another live real-time dashboard that's kind of showing you where your metrics are over the last month or so, if they're up or down, and, and all those kind of things. But it's just a few different uh, screens you can look at. But if you kind of want real-time metrics, especially on the chat side of things, which is why I think they're focusing on this, if you have an active chat, um, it's going to tell you how many agents are online, uh, what the average waiting time is for the chat, what the response time is, uh, the ratings that are coming in. It's kind of a real-time dashboard as to what's going on. Uh, pretty cool. It requires an Apple TV, which is going to cost you a couple hundred bucks, but uh, pretty nice way to kind of sling that those stats up, Tyler. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine kind of similar to Motivator, throw this up on a TV in the sales room or in the customer service room and let people look into any of these kind of top level reports as they are working in that space. So pretty cool. I mean, the more that you can gather up this data and present it to your team, the better. And this is just another way to do that. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right. And then moving on with the news here, um, this one, I think all, everybody in our entire development team and senior consultants will just do a little happy dance right now. Uh, you can now, in Zoho CRM, uh, you can retry failed actions from workflow reports. Thank goodness. Um, so this is a pretty big update for the CRM, especially if you are a pretty heavy user or if you're automating a lot of actions. Um, basically in the CRM, a workflow is a way to set up an if then statement. So if the lead status goes to qualified, then run this custom function that will, you know, make a record over here, send an email to this person and so on. One of the kind of classic issues in the CRM has always been that if that workflow were to run and if the function were to fail, it doesn't really go anywhere. It, it will go into a log of function failures that you can see, but there's no particular ability previously, at least to actually rerun that action. Now for the developers listening, you know, you could go in and grab the record ID and open the function and manually save and execute to retry it. Um, but for a normal user who just wants to go in here and do this type of stuff that can be a little bit inaccessible. So basically what they've done here is give a like full on report and log of any workflow failures. And then they've opened up the ability to, you know, rerun that workflow. Uh, once you've maybe made a tweak to the function or made some type of minor edit to the trigger conditions. Um, 
all in all, I mean, this is huge. It's like a necessary step, I think, as they continue to grow the functionality in the CRM. Um, there's just so many people that are automating, you know, huge chunks of their workflow. And this, I think, is going to make them feel a lot better, knowing that if something ever were to have an error, it's going to go into this one consolidated place and we can rerun any actions that did fail due to an error. Um, so big step, huge, huge quality of life improvement, especially for, of course, speaking selfishly as developers and consultants for the product, this is great. Um, but even just a lot of users will get in there and, you know, write a pretty simple custom function or some workflow actions and just having the ability to rerun that's going to be great. Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, and this is a really detailed article. If you're not watching us on YouTube, you're just listening to us, uh, go ahead, go to Zanata, click on Zero Zen Show, click on the latest show, or, you know, this will be in the newsletter. But uh, this is not just a, hey, a little announcement here we did. It's kind of a step-by-step -step guide how to do the whole thing. So yeah, good, good job. Joe. So kudos so, oh, to good. you, CRM team. Yeah, big kudos to you. Yeah. This one, this one's great. Didn't they do something similar to this um, for Zoho Flow, allowing you to run failed flows? Yeah, they added, uh, they added maybe three or four months ago, they added a branch for an error on an action. So if a function nice. spits out an error, or if you're missing a required field, you can have it, you know, send you an email or apply some, you know, missing last name value and then create the lead or something with that. So they're doing more of this kind of across the platform, this error checking and reruns. Nice. All righty. And then moving right along, um, this is a small one, but uh, Canvas View, just they're kind of making some improvements to it. If you're not familiar in Zoho CRM, we've had Canvas now for a little while. Um, and this allows you to really completely arrange your page any way you would like it for any module. Um, uh, it's still got a little ways to go. It's getting there though. And this is one small change, which actually allows you to uh, upload images directly inside Canvas. So uh, before you kind of, if you wanted to do those kind of things yeah, while you're building the page, you had to link to a URL and do that. Now you can just go ahead and directly uh, directly do that, which is, I think, uh, a much better, much better way. Just upload the image would, you want to see on the canvas so. view rather yeah. than point to a URL. Yes. Yeah, it will yes. be nice. Good I am interested to see in 2022 all the updates that I'm sure will come for Canvas in the CRM. I know it's kind of a big one for them, you know, rolling out this ability to build your own UI and kind of create your own page out of any individual record in the CRM. They've definitely been updating it a lot throughout the course of the last year or so since it came out. And I'm expecting that it's just going to get better and better. I am too. I am too. Let's hope. All righty. And then uh, moving on with the news, um, the title of our show, Zoho's old calendar is getting deprecated. So that's calendar deprecation. Anyway, that's supposed to be Californication <laughs> play on there if you didn't know. Um, and so a little announcement around that. I do have to point out that um, it, it appears, Tyler, that sarcasm, you know, there can be some cultural barriers to sarcasm, <laughs> evidently. So <laughs> Zoho did a nice little thing here. They said, man, your feedback made our day and it's got great Zoho. You continue to impress me. I switched from Google G Suite and I've never looked back. I love you. I love the new look and feels. Thank you so much. Congratulations to the team. And then this one, wow, support for different time zones and dark mode for night. How did you come up with such brilliant game-changing features? Hey, Zoho team, let's take that one out. <laughs> Person <laughs> is not being very nice. Um, anyway, uh, old calendar is dead. New calendar is here. They've been making improvements to it. I'm pretty... Um, I like it. Calendar's good. Uh, we don't need yeah. to talk. It's so close. This is the year. It's Come on. Down. I see it. Yeah, I feel just, it. Yep. Once once it has the same level of integrations with other things like Google yep. Calendar does, or if you know Zoho Meeting and Bookings can get up to snuff, we'd love to make the jump. But if you are currently using the rest of the Zoho applications, it's now actually worth taking a look at Calendar. Before it was just a non-starter. It looked like you know early '90s design philosophy. You know, very very minimal. Um, new one is a lot prettier, and I know that they're working really hard to tie in more and more applications to add things to this calendar automatically. So I think they when really we're are. talking about the calendar here in a year, it's going to be an even more resounding, give this a look, um, because they've got big plans here for the new Zoho calendar. Yeah, calendar mail tasks. Those are all kind of, a, there's a whole theme they've got going on there. Um, 
And I, you know, they're doing some really interesting integrations. We're going to talk about one in a minute. So I think those things are coming. So good yep. on Zoho there. All righty. And then um, talking of interesting integrations, Zoho Biggin used to be, we had an, like three updates a week on Biggin. They've kind of slowed yep. down. Uh, but now Biggin has got uh, constant contact integration. A lot of people love constant contact. Uh, we personally think Zoho campaigns is fantastic. And I don't know why you'd use constant contact. If you have campaigns, if you're on Zoho one, but you know, a lot of marketing teams, you know, people use products. They like those products and they don't want to change. So they stay with those products. And so, you know, why not support them? So, uh, super nice here. Uh, you can now actually integrate uh, constant contact into Biggin if that is what you were using as your CRM solution and handle your marketing directly out of there. So, uh, Good on Zoho. Very nice. I think you covered yes. that one. I don't, yes, not a lot more that can be said about that. And then Zoho meetings is um, just, you know, catching up and trying to get better and doing some stuff. So they've introduced virtual backgrounds, which is good. Everybody has those. And I think it's kind of nice. Uh, you know, this wasn't a huge deal, Tyler. I mean, it's nice to have them built in, but there's so many software programs out there that can give you virtual backgrounds if that's what you want. Yeah. You know, no I don't know. I, I almost disagree with you. I think virtual backgrounds are mission critical nowadays for like di digital yeah. meeting tools. I think most people don't want to install their own. And if they're choosing between Zoho Meeting and Zoom and any of those others that already have this built in, I, I think it's a decision-making feature. Um, especially Let with remote work. So why. I'm excited they're adding so these. Let, so if I'm a person and I'm in meetings all day and they're not my meetings, I'm just jumping around to meetings and I set up something like one of those virtual background software. What's the one you use? Uh, I've been using Chroma Cam to mixed results. Chrome, that's, right, right, right. That's what you got going right now, right? Chroma mm -hmm. Cam and it's mixed results. But you could technically set that background and Every time you do any meeting, you don't have to go in and say, sure. oh, I'm in here. I've never used this before. Let me go upload it. You know, I'm just, that was That's true. But anyway, this is nice. They have added in that and they've actually added blur effect as well. And you can now raise your hand and they've got, uh, I guess you can do emojis, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, just kind of stuff that a lot of other ones have, but they're, they're getting there. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen in this application. I think we talked about it when we did our... Uh, Zoho One review. You know, Sridhar is, mm -hmm. the, the whole management team is invested on Zoho meetings becoming best in class. So I think, uh, I think 2022 is going to be a, a good year for Zoho meeting. All righty. Absolutely. Okay. And then with that, Tyler, I guess it is time for our implementation of the week. What do you got? All righty. So this is one that we did here within Zoho Desk. Um, and it actually ties in with some Zoho CRM account data. Um, so oftentimes kind of a process that we see when people are in Zoho, especially if you're in Zoho One or CRM Plus, where you kind of have all of their customer experience applications, it's pretty common that, you know, someone will come in as a lead and they'll get qualified. You'll convert them to a contact account and deal, and then you'll work that deal through your pipeline until they become a active client. And what we've commonly seen happen is basically that once someone becomes an active client, a lot of the interaction for the rest of your time with that person is actually going to come through Zoho Desk. Um, and so what we did here is basically a build out where within the CRM, you can define a, you know, account owner, or you could use a custom user lookup field inside of the CRM to basically assign the point of contact for that new customer. Um, what we found is that for a lot of people, the CRM is kind of the natural place to do this assignment. You know, maybe the customer success representative gets looped in at the tail end of the sale and you select them on the deal. And then once it's one, you want to kick them up to the account. So oftentimes we find that these, these representative assignments happen within the CRM. But then a ticket will come into desk later, and it would be great if we could have that ticket automatically get assigned to whichever user we linked up with that account over in the CRM. There's nothing out of the box to do that, um, but using a little deluge function triggering in a Zoho desk workflow when that ticket gets created, um, we can actually go ahead and you know look at the customer on file for that ticket, 
go find the CRM version of that customer based on, you know, reference ID or a matching name, and then get whichever user is in that account owner field, or if it's in a different user lookup field, that's fair game too. So now we've got our CRM user. All we need to do is line up a CRM user with a desk user and assign them to that ticket. Um, so it's just one of those ones where it's going to save you a lot of time. You basically just assign a person to an account in the CRM, and then any future desk tickets are just going to automatically route to that assigned person. Um, you know, you can do this with Flow in a couple different ways as well. We do it with the day, uh, Deluge just natively inside a desk because it triggers the fastest and runs the most stable. Um, but we found, I mean, it's honestly, this is not a huge, huge function. This is not a 10 hour build, you know, nothing like that, but it does save just, uh, you know, a ton of time down the road and it kills that delay of a ticket coming in, waiting two hours until someone sees it, then them assigning it to that person. You can just have the system do it for you. Nice. So are we looking at. So you're basically building this table separately. So, you know, one of the problems with desk that we run into occasionally, I'm wondering if this would solve it is maybe a, an account is entered in the CRM and it doesn't show up in desk for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Could you use this? Could we look into the CRM and then pull that in as well? Could you force that? Yeah, uh, yeah that you could. It would depend on, you, you could. Um, like in this function, there's a lot of checks and balances that are going on. So like yeah. if, you know, most of the time for something like this, there's probably been enough time for a sync to happen between the CRM and right. desk. Like you're, you're really only worried about that sync if you're expecting stuff to come in like within three hours of the deal being made, right? Or of being closed. But generally speaking, there's gonna be enough time for this to happen. Um, one of the great things I will highlight on this before we move on is just that if that account is assigned to someone and maybe you've got John Smith and Susie Smith in the CRM, but now Brett Martin emails in, as long as their email domain matches the domain of a contact with that account, Desk will actually make that connection. So even if it's a contact nice. that isn't known already, this function can still work. Oh, sweet, man. Excellent. Yeah, it's a good one. Desk is a very, very solid tool. It really is. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. And that takes us to this week's read. A uh, shout out to Wayne for finding this one. Um, this comes from the Zapier blog and it's Reddit marketing, how to get it right and get it wrong. I have to confess, I didn't know, I would never even think about marketing on Reddit. <laughs> so this is an interesting, an interesting read for me. Um, Reddit to me is the Craigslist of, uh, of basically I don't know what it is. I guess it's a Schultz for media. I can't quite figure it out. But if you want to market on Reddit, here you go. And <laughs> here's kind of everything you need to know before you get a campaign going and how to engage and those kind of things. Do you hang out on Reddit much, Tyler? Not too much. If I'm doing product research, like I was looking to get a new set of headphones not too long ago, I'll always find myself on to some type of sub forum on Reddit because people are just such enthusiasts over there. So I do use it yeah. every now and then for researching like a product because I know that the most insane detail oriented people are going to be on Reddit um, and I can kind of crowdsource an opinion, but I don't use it too much on like a day to day for browsing. It is interesting yes. though. I mean, the, I think what I would imagine if you are going to market on Reddit is you need to be really, really careful. You could definitely do it wrong, right? If you go in and try to act like you're an organic post and, you know, people are going to sniff right. it out and you're going to damage your brand image. But if you can do it right, I mean, you are pitching to a very enthusiast crowd. Yeah. So if you're looking for that other channel, head over there, um, take a look at Reddit and take a look at this article. You know, it's funny. Have you ever used wire cutter? It's part of the New York no. times. So Never wire cutter is, is, so the New York times has got a whole separate website called wire cutter, where basically you do a search there for, I want the best headphones mm. and it's going to be, we spent, and it's, it's kind of reporting on this. So we spent 500 hours with 50 different headsets and, you know, boom, mm -hmm. boom, 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 boom. And kind of, they roll it on out. I mean, it's great for coffee makers. And then you can mm -hmm. kind of go over to Reddit and maybe verify their opinions, but the wire cutter is a great, great resource for those I'll of you have to take a look. just for finding anything. It's good. I use it almost anytime I'm going to buy anything. I go there first get their top picks and they'll have, Hey, here's our, here's our best pick. 
here's our budget pick. Here's our luxury pick. You know, money's no object whatsoever. You know, sure. you can go this direction. So pretty cool stuff. All righty. And then that takes us to uh, what's new on Zanata.com. A uh, couple of things. First of all, I want to talk about the Z Portals webinar that I did this week with uh, John Mark. Gave you a little break there, Tyler, <laughs> from doing tutorials and everything time. else. <laughs> yeah, so um, we did a webinar on Z Portals, uh, 57 minutes long. We go, basically go in-depth into it. If you aren't familiar, um, the title of the YouTube video says it all, the only Zoho portal you will ever need. Um, it works with forms, it works with CRM, it works with inventory, it works with desk, it works with analytics, it works with sign and work drive and subscriptions and uh, vaults and books. It's just pulls all those things in and you can give a customer facing portal. It's fantastic and I highly recommend it. Um, if you head over to zportals.com, um, you can kind of get a full overview of that as well. And I think we have a very, we got a special code in here. Um, doo, 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 where is it? Um, yeah, there's a link. There's a link on the YouTube channel here. And if you click that link, it's going to basically give you a 30 day free trial. So if you want to try it out, this is a WordPress plugin. Um, very, very nice. Uh, we did a whole bunch of different things here looking at, uh, you know, the, uh, all sorts of different case studies and logins and what a portal would look like. And uh, just this is in depth. So, you know, if you've got an hour and you're thinking about doing a portal, uh, this replaces, you know, I want to have the Zoho CRM portal and then I want to have a subscription portal and I want to have a books mm -hmm. portal and I want to have this kind of replaces all that. Um, so we're taking a look at they've done a great job. It's been around for a couple of years now. Um, and yep. they've just been honing it, making it better and better and better. So check this out. And, uh, if you need help do they actually give you, I think a free hour of setup help. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, it's worth it. So take a look guys. And I hope you found that that was worthwhile. And then over and above that Tyler, then you and I, we did it. We did the Zoho One uh, full product <laughs> tutorial webinar, um, and we actually also have a full breakdown of that. How what, what how long did we did an hour and thirteen an minutes hour and fifteen? Yeah, just about. It gets oh, harder yeah, every year not... to bring that in in a reasonable amount of time as they just keep adding more and more <laughs> applications. It uh, gets a little tricky to I get know. through that in an hour. <laughs> Well, it was an hour and three minutes last year, so an hour and 13 this year, hour, yeah, hour and 13, hour 14, really. But they added six new apps, and they added a whole new mm -hmm. interface. We had to cover all of that. So um, anyway. So the question are, uh, will be, will it get longer every year on a linear curve or an exponential curve? That's going to be the question. Yeah. And shout out for the marketing team, because we really redid every single slide got reworked um, this year. So... You know, we basically covered for each product where it sits in our resource library. Is it a yes, a maybe, or a no in the Zoho product world? What G2 thinks about it? If it won any Zenmies and how many years has won a Zenmi for it? Now that we've got two years under our belt, um, the pros, the cons, why we rated it the way we did. Uh, man, dude, we hustled on this one. But, you know, I didn't feel like we were rushing it. Did you? I don't think so. There were, there were definitely a couple applications, the ones that we don't recommend that we probably went through a little quick. Um, but mostly just yep. because we don't want to labor over something that at the end of the day, we're going to tell you you probably shouldn't use. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you are looking at Zoho, if you've already got Zoho one, looking at maybe some more ways to save money and migrate some functionality over, or if you're looking at the platform as a whole, it's, it's worth giving it a look. Yeah, it is. And there's a lot of timestamps here. So, um, <laughs> whatever product you want to run through, uh, we've got them all listed here and you can kind of zip through it when you go and look at that video. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, again, thanks for the marketing team for putting that together. That was one of the few ones where we really just didn't have to go build the whole thing ourselves. That was kind of pleasant, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Just to that was great. show up and do the show. I know no <laughs> rehearsing. Of course we never rehearse, but it worked out well anyway. All righty. And then that takes us to... Our pick of the week, I love this pick of the week. I was going to show it to you, but we're having some screen sharing issues on it. But this is a Google Chrome extension manager. And 
you can go ahead and uh, you know go over to just we've got the link. It'll be in the show notes. It's called Extension Manager, and the cool part about this is it basically gives you a little drop down of all the extensions you have installed. And if you're watching this on YouTube, the ones up top are the ones that are enabled. The ones down below are the ones that you have disabled. So you can kind of quickly turn extensions on and off. And for us, Tyler, every single time we do this show, I have an extension called uh, Ring Central that actually Mm -hmm. sits over to the side of the screen and it's kind of sticking out and I need to basically disable that. That thing does not want to go away. Yeah, it does not want to go away. You have to fully turn off that plugin completely to get that to go away. Right. So I'm playing around with Extension Manager and I go and I click disable, boom, gone, gone, instant. And then I go enable it and it's back. Love this application. Also, you can kind of like turn off extensions you're not using because it's so easy to quickly just turn them on and off, on and off. So if you wanted to say, Mm -hmm. hey, I really don't need any of the 90% of things I have running. I just want to turn them on when I want to use them, maybe improve my browser speed, maybe, in, you know, if you're on a laptop, not use much power. Anyway, really, really cool application. So happy I found it. I highly, highly recommend Extension Manager. Great job for those guys um, as well. All righty. And, uh, you know, I was going to demo Extension Manager and show you how I could turn it on and off. And I was going to do it on Full Moon Sushi site. So I am going to, Although I can't really demo it for you guys, I am going to give a big shout out to Full Moon Sushi. <laughs> this is the best sushi restaurant in San Diego. If you're in the Gas Lamp District, it's like going to a Michelin star restaurant. This place freaking rocks! And shout out to the team down there. I mean, it's a, it's a can't miss when you're down and in we San promise Diego. This is, not, this is not sponsored. This is genuine. This is not a sponsor. Happy. I was just going to show how you could turn. I, I was going to show how you could turn it on and off. If you wanted to call them, you could click on their number. I had this queued up here, but since that part failed, I did want to give these guys a shout out. I don't even live in San Diego, <laughs> but this, uh, this place is redonkulous from a sushi restaurant uh, point of view. So shout out to the team over at full moon. All righty, Tyler. And then that brings us to our tip of the week, which is, Technically, we did, but it's really you. So uh, this was an 11-minute video we did on basically how to import anything. Yeah, and so what we did here is kind of go through and actually show like a file, right? What you might want to do with the actual spreadsheet that you've got before you run the import, where to go in the CRM to import to a particular module, how to map all of your various fields, and then a couple tips around the import process like you know, selections on, do you want to create, update, or both? Do you want to set any default values on the import? Um, All in all, if you've got a spreadsheet and want to get it into Zoho, this video should get you uh, pretty much everything you need. Yes. Yeah. It's it's funny. I thought when we did this, it was going to be like a one minute video, but we just kept going on and on and on and on and on. So uh, a lot of little nuance to this stuff. So we thought we'd try to cover it all. Yeah, there really is. There really is. So we hope you enjoy the tip of the week. And with that, let's get to our Q&A. But before we do, as we'll say many times, if you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and sign up for notifications. We would greatly appreciate it. And if you wanted to get all of the links to everything we've talked about today, then go to zanata.com slash newsletter and um, subscribe. By the way, if you're watching this, I do want to apologize to the several thousand people (laughs) that were spammed on our newsletter link. Uh, Someone actually did some really nefarious things um, and uh, went in and were just subscribing to newsletters using other people's email addresses. And so, you know, that's kind of one of those crazy things because it didn't matter about the opt-in, right? It's just irritating Mm -hmm. because they're Mm -hmm. getting the the double opt-in, but it's not them and they didn't opt-in. And Basically, they made their name spam, which is great. Their first name, last name yeah, was like spam. A link and all and the they, stuff in their name. Yeah. 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 Very, very, very irritating. But that's all been fixed now. So, uh, anyway. And with that, Tyler, let's talk about our questions. Um, John Pareka, who evidently was watching our live show, I think he was actually watching our live show on, uh, oh, no, actually last week's show, uh, episode 181. Hey, who charted? He wants to know. We just started using Zoho Bookings. What are the concerns with Bookings? So the big concern um, with Bookings, it. yeah, the, the big concern with Bookings is just that if you're using a like Google Calendar or you're using your 365 calendar, Bookings is only going to sync with that calendar at best once per day. 
Um, now we've also seen those integrations are very shaky. Uh, the Google calendar integration, for example, has to be regularly reset. If you want to be safe, reset it every day. Um, and even then it will miss events. And so the, the problem that we found with it is that if your calendar syncs at 8 a.m. and then you walk into the office at 9 a.m. and you decide, I don't want to take meetings from 11 to 2 tomorrow. So you block that off on your calendar. There's an entire, you know, 23 hour period until that next sync when that part of your calendar won't be blocked off inside of bookings. Um, so right. if, if you're using bookings to manage the calendar of something that is only important for bookings, like if you had, if you wanted to book out conference rooms in your office, right. And the only things that are going to get on the conference room calendar are going to come through bookings, then honestly it would work great. But if you're using it for, you know, having some inbound sales calls, but you're also going to use your calendar these other ways, it just starts to come apart at the seams a little bit. Um, it's really designed to get used for that, like asset booking a lot more than booking people from what we found, just because of those issues with the calendar integrations. I think it's important just to highlight that when you look at it compared to something like Calendly, Calendly is not actually syncing your calendar into Calendly. It's just checking your calendar when someone goes to book. Yeah, it just yep. checks it right at the point when they select that they want to book with you. Um, so they're just built really differently. And you want to make sure that if you are using bookings, you're using it for, I think, what it's best designed to do, which is booking a room or a seat or you know something that is not a human who's going to have other things getting added to their calendar. You know, all that being said, Tyler, I was spending some I looked at it for a few hours the other day. Man, I wish they'd fix that syncing because the interface is actually very lovely. Um, oh, interface is great. Integrations with the rest of Zoho are fantastic. You can run yeah. deluge functions when they get booked or rescheduled or canceled. I mean, it's a great tool in a lot of ways, but the way that they built it from like a foundational level just means that it's not the same kind of tool as Calendly or Acuity. Yeah. It just doesn't really solve the same problem because of the way that they integrated with calendars. Yep. All right, let's move on. So on our Zoho desk, an introduction to tickets. Uh, it's Katu asked, can it be used on phone? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> there is a Zoho desk. There is a Zoho desk mobile app for iOS and Android, and it is very fully functional. So yes, absolutely. It's you can use it on phone. Um, and then DJS Digital asked, after watching our inventory full product tutorial, are there still issues with QuickBooks and can you elaborate more, please? Yeah, so the, the issues with QuickBooks and the, the pre-built integration between inventory and QuickBooks come in in very like specific ways. The big piece of it is that like you will see weird like chart of accounts entries that are coming from inventory over to QuickBooks and there aren't really proper logs in the integration itself to know like exactly what happened in inventory to cause that adjustment or that um, you know journal entry or whatever is happening over on QuickBooks. Um, so while it is gonna sync your products, it is gonna sync your stock, I believe we didn't really see too many issues with that. It just has some weird little kinks in it that can cause accounting issues and there isn't really any auditability or tracing in the integration settings to understand what happened. You also can't really edit anything about it. So like if you would want to say, say a certain transaction was causing an entry to account A, and that's kind of the normal way to do it. But you wanted a transaction like that to actually make a debit or credit to account B, you can't do that. It, it is just going to do exactly what it's pre-baked designed to do. So it might be worth checking it out. You know, it's not like a non-starter. We do have some people that are using it effectively, but it just has a tendency to do weird things. And there isn't really any traceability when a weird thing happens. And because it's talking to your accounting system, that is a dangerous game. Uh, if there's any bits of weirdness going on in there and you let that stew for a year, you could have a big cleanup project in QuickBooks. Yep, absolutely. All righty. And moving on, uh, Chris Dinicola asks, after watching our CRM automatic generation of invoices and packages, we have two questions on this. Chris asks, how can I create yearly invoices? My clients pay yearly subscription, but I don't want them to commit to a yearly charge during the initial payment. I don't want to scare them. 
Um, gosh, Tyler, what would you think? A little script that would go ahead and check a date in the CRM yeah, and automatically two, generate that invoice? Two options. Yeah, you could absolutely do it that way. That would completely work. You could have like a billing schedule module that gets populated out when you win a deal and then a function that does it that way. If you wanted to do it without writing a bunch of code and going crazy, you could definitely set up just a recurring invoice inside of Zoho Books that's set up on an annual cadence and is set up to automatically send that invoice to the customer. Um, that would basically function like a subscription, except it wouldn't auto charge them unless you told it to, it would just send them an invoice for a pre-baked amount on a yearly basis. All right. And Duck Neil and Wong ask, this is awesome. Please, uh, help us so we can create this automation. I'm trying to remember what we did on that little invoice and packaging. This, yeah. Well, this, there. this video might need a name tweak. This is not in CRM. It's actually in books, um, okay. books and inventory. But this is a video from a long time back now. I think it was actually when we used to make videos demoing our implementation of the week. Um, this is basically a function that when a certain action happens to a sales order, let's say the sales order gets confirmed, is like a common point that this will happen. Um, this is a little deluge function that will automatically create an invoice for those items and a package for those items to kind of do your receivables and your fulfillment automatically for you. Um, what you would do to create this is you would go into the settings, you'd go into automation, you would need to write a custom function for this. Unfortunately, it's not anything that's done with default functionality. Um, if you're comfortable with JavaScript or scripting languages like that, you should be able to work through it based on the API documentations. Otherwise, you could always give Zoho a chat. They're actually very, very helpful and will oftentimes help out with some of these kind of automations like this. All right, fantastic. Let us move on to the next question. Um, Damien, after watching our 2021 inventory order processing video said, can you print and ship many orders at once? No, I don't believe you can. Can you, Tyler? I think they may have added it to the standard inventory flow for packages. I will say okay. oftentimes any of our customers who are doing a lot of volume through inventory end up using easy ship, which has a pre-baked integration for inventory in easy ship. You can very, very easily do this. You can just select a whole bunch of orders. You can even make a pick list out of them on the fly and then, you know, do all of your labeling at yep. once. I do think though, that they did add it to the, um, default flow inside of inventory. It might just have a cap of like how many you can do at a time. Yeah. All righty. And then moving on after watching our Zoho Learn, creating articles and content 2021. Uh, hey, can you embed a YouTube private video into Learn? If yes, how? If no, suggest me an alternative way to do it. Thanks in advance. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. We actually ran this through our Learn team here. <laughs> the people who actually use it and build a bunch of stuff for internally. Um, and it's just basically grab that link. I mean, if it's private, you still have the link. You can grab that link and you can go ahead and embed it. Uh, might be easier, though, just to make it an unlisted video. If you're having any trouble, that was the other suggestion. If being a private video um, isn't working, Maybe make kills it a the embed unlisted. or something. What's yeah. that? Maybe the be having it be private kills the embed functionality. Yeah. So if you just make it unlisted, it still accomplishes virtually the same thing. Unless someone has the link, they can't see it. Um, it's not indexed and you then can actually go ahead and drop that into Zoho Learn. I hope that helps. And then you had another question here. And this one came after watching our inventory full product tutorial. Um, and this was from Johnny Ferris. Can Zoho inventory be used to track trucks that are used to carry freight? When I first read this, I was going to say yes, but then I'm reading it. If I ship freight from one location to another, how is this performed in Zoho in the sales and purchase order segments of Zoho? Thank you so much for the informative videos. So Tyler, you can actually use a truck as a warehouse, but that's not what we're doing here. It's kind of like, I imagine- you're you're from warehouse to warehouse. Yeah, yeah. You, you're, so you're basically, basically, while it's on the truck, you would just want to say it's now at the other warehouse you're sending it to. Or if it's on the truck and you've sold it to somebody, well then, you know, that's basically a sale taking it out of inventory. Do you read that yeah, the same way I'm reading? I think, yeah, I think what you would actually do is if you, um, if, and we're making a couple of assumptions here, I'm assuming that like when we're shipping freight from one location to another, both of those would be like a warehouse. 
Um, so like if both of those were a warehouse where you were shipping your inventory between them, you could surely do that with a transfer order. Um, I don't know that the transfer order would track the stock in transit. Um, so if you were looking to get as granular as knowing that for these like three days, the stock was on the truck, I don't know a transfer order would do that, but it would definitely allow you to say, I am moving this quantity of this unit, this quantity of this, you know, from this warehouse to another. Um, if you were doing this from like your shipping freight to a customer. So like one location being your warehouse, one being a customer, you could surely use a sales order just with large quantities for the freight volume. Um, and then the same if the you know freight was coming from a vendor to your warehouse, you could surely do it with a purchase order. Um, but I'm thinking based on your question, you're thinking your warehouse to your warehouse, and that would actually be done with a transfer order, which should show up if you have multiple warehouses turned on. All right. And then another question, which got a lot of us having conversations around this earlier today. Um, so uh, Lourdes Tabaras asks, uh, after watching our Zoho campaigns, how to send a campaign. I have a question. I set up the campaign, but nowhere does the send screen appear that appears at 1414 14 of the video. And what she's referring to is this screen where it says, send now, select schedule type and create batches. We're not sure Lourdes, but if we had to guess, um, when you create a campaign and you send it to be sent the very first time when you're doing this, it actually has to be approved by Zoho. And so you won't see the screen. If you're, if you're watching us on, if you're not watching on YouTube, when you send a campaign and after you've been doing this for a while, they're just automatically approved. I mean, after they've done three or four or five year campaigns, they realize you're not a spammer and they, they, you know, you instantly get this cheers, your campaign has been approved. And then you get the option to send it now to schedule it, to send it in batches, however you want to basically send your campaign, you can, you get all these choices to kind of get it off, off to the races. Um, in this case though, she didn't get this screen, which means you usually get a screen that says, Hey, thank you. We'll let you know when your campaign's approved. Once mm -hmm. that happens, then you see this screen. That's my take on this, Tyler. Would you agree? Yeah. And if, if you go into the campaigns and you're not seeing this, you would probably just need to click into the campaign in the list of approved campaigns or unsent campaigns. And it should show this for you once it is approved. All right. And with that, we end yet another CRM Zen show in the can. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please head over to Zanata.com or you can actually leave detailed comments over at club.zanata.com. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Um, of course, we would love if you would follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us here on YouTube, as well as your favorite choice of podcast streaming platform. Thanks again for watching. Great show, buddy. Yeah, another week, another week, another show, another smooth outro with Freddie's. Yeah. Freddie's jam. Yeah, I'm going to write lyrics to this. You know? <laughs>